So thank you for joining us as we celebrate the opening of our new Cancer Research Center. 41 years ago, our UECOMP regional campus was created by state legislators whose goal was to improve access to quality health care for those of us who live in central Illinois. Today, UECOMP educates over 60% of the area's primary care providers, and it provides care to tens of thousands of patients. Dr. Jasty Rao, recruited by prior Dean Don Rager, is leading an immensely successful cancer research program that has received over 27.7 million in grants and published 150 papers since he arrived in Peoria. Dr. Rao and his team recently discovered and patented a promising new anti-cancer treatment that is now being safety tested before moving into clinical trials. We believe that this new cancer research center will attract additional exceptional cancer researchers to the College of Medicine, where they will make the laboratory-based discoveries that will one day lead to a cure for cancer. The Cancer Center, as many of you know, had a very long incubation period, about 10 years. And at the time when it began, Secretary of Transportation LaHood played an important role in its inception. So thanks for coming today to watch this come to fruition, and uh, thanks for sharing this event. Secretary LaHood. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to come back. This uh, project has nothing to do with transportation, and I'm sure for some of you, you're wondering uh, why I'm standing here. But uh, during my time uh, representing uh, the 18th District, I had the opportunity to pull a few people together in my office, including Dave Leach and then Representative Schock and, and Dale Reisinger and George Shadid and a number of other community leaders, Glenn Barton and, uh, uh, and folks from Caterpillar and uh, Mayor Artis and, uh, and we talked about the idea that uh, our community is so blessed with uh, great medical facilities. And we talked about the idea that in central Illinois, if you want to find a cure for your disease, you can find it right here because of what the U of I has done in bringing some of the smartest young people uh, into their residency program and I don't know what percent have stayed in central Illinois but a big percentage have stayed here and contributed enormously to our medical community and uh, we talked about the idea that we had such a great resource in Dr. Rao uh, maybe one of the smartest people in the world maybe one of the smartest researchers in the world right here in central Illinois but in order for him to really continue to make the kind of uh, work that he does valuable and take it to the next level, uh, he needed a facility, he needed some labs, and he needed the, uh, the ability to bring other researchers to central Illinois. And so thanks to the cooperation of uh, Joe Flaherty, the, the previous dean, and Joe White, the previous president uh, of the University of Illinois, who were great leaders in our effort, who never ever really said no to us uh, in our efforts uh, to move this uh, idea forward uh, and to make sure that Dr. Rao stayed right here in central Illinois and to make sure that we really tapped in to the great resource that we have here. Two fantastic medical facilities, the University of Illinois Medical School, so many residents and smart young men and women coming here and staying here. Uh, what an extraordinary opportunity. And every elected official, irrespective of politics, step forward. Caterpillar, as usual, step forward. Uh, so what we're really celebrating here today is the idea that good leadership can take our community to the next level. The idea that there can be a cure for cancer with good research by very, very smart people like Dr. Rao, a cure for cancer may be found right here in central Illinois. What a, what a gift we're giving to our community. So I say to all of these people gathered here, uh, thank you for your leadership. From Caterpillar to Dave Leach to Dave Kaler to Dale Reisinger, uh, Jim Artis, our whole community 
everybody, the U of I, we have given the ultimate gift to our community this holiday season. And I, I'm, I'm very proud to have played a small part in this. Have a blessed holiday, everybody. Thank you very much. It certainly is my pleasure to be here this morning uh, representing the entire University of Illinois Board of Trustees. We're very, very proud of all our facilities uh, on the three campuses and regional campuses. And so I'm just delighted to say uh, some compliments to you this morning. This is very important to the Board of Trustees really for two reasons. First of all, we are very interested in seeing all citizens of Illinois uh, be assisted uh, as they need help uh, by the University of Illinois. And I think this is a perfect example of how we're spreading out to help citizens of Illinois who otherwise may not be served. And in this particular case, we all know people who could be helped at this facility. And I think that personalizes uh, why we're here today and what this is all about. And the second reason is that you know we're all going through very hard times and the board knows that we have to look for more and more collaboration than ever before. And this project is one of the best I can think of, of collaboration between uh, public officials, units of government, uh, private business, hospitals. And so I congratulate all of you for uh, being willing to collaborate and come together to build uh, and hire Dr. Rao and uh, we're just so proud of everything that he's doing for us here in Illinois. So congratulations to you and thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it is indeed a great honor and a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I've visited uh, in the past, uh, since uh, I've come here uh, as interim dean uh, about just less than a year ago, been to Peoria at least uh, five times, and I've seen the progress of this building. And it's such a wonderful project. It uh, symbolizes the collaboration between the university, uh, the uh, civic leaders, as well as the great research that is led by Dr. Rao and we can see a lot of potential advances happening here in Peoria at the College of Medicine because of these, this great collaboration that has happened uh, over the years. And I have to thank all of you here, seated and standing, for all the great work that you have done to make this uh, wonderful project uh, possible. Uh, today, I think we're, we're celebrating an important step towards uh, eliminating cancer, to, for curing cancer. Uh, I uh, have myself three NIH grants, uh, and I felt like uh, I'm an accomplished researchers, uh, researcher, but then when I look at somebody who has seven NIH grants, I realize I have a lot more to do, and uh, now I think, uh, you know, when you give up the chance of going more than three, what else to do? You become a dean. Uh, so uh, Dr. Rao missed his chance of being a dean, but at least he will cure cancer. Uh, <laughs> At one point, he had eight NIH grants, and at one point in time, he was the only person in the country who had that number of RO1s. And that's really unique. And to be able to do that with the relatively limited resources that he had here makes this even more impressive. Uh, Dr. Rao has done great research. Many of you have had a tour of the labs, and you're seeing the potential where it could be. And as an individual, he can only do so much, but being a leader, and especially in the great collaboration with our great leader, Dr. Sarah Rush, uh, we can all see the potential of recruiting many, many other great people who will continue in this effort. And that whole collaboration is going to lead to a cure of cancer. We know now that some of this uh, research has been patented. A company in India uh, is uh, testing it. We'll be uh, hopefully soon seeing that phase one trials and then uh, further trials, if not on this discovery, perhaps on the stem cell research that you've all seen some demonstration of. Uh, it is extremely exciting. 
And again, uh, it's this uh, great collaboration that has led to this. And I think uh, uh, it's an important milestone in the career of Dr. Uh, Rao that he is now able to grow his work to the next level where there's going to be multiple collaborations, 150 over 10 years. In the future, we're going to see out of this lab 150 publications per year and maybe a Nobel Prize to follow. Dr. Rao, congratulations. And I think everybody here shares with me uh, this uh, enthusiasm about the potential of this great project. And on behalf of the other campuses of the College of Medicine, the, of the University of Illinois, in uh, Rockford, in uh, Urbana, and in Chicago, we'd like to congratulate you and Dr. Raj for such a great project. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone here in this room. And uh, I really appreciate uh, the honor and everybody's talking and uh, I may not get Nobel Prize, I guarantee you that, but I will improve the survival of the patient definitely. And first of all, when I visited second time here in Peoria two, oh, 2000, and uh, I went home and I told Dr. Rager definitely going to offer, my wife told me, First, see the offer, then made your mind. And then I said, uh, once the offer got and she quit her job, I really appreciate her because she just promoted as assistant vice president in Chase Manhattan Bank. She quit right away. I really appreciate her support. And stand up, Mrs. Ryan. And also, Dr. Rager asked me, what is the guarantee, Dr. Rao, when I give the offer, whatever you ask, and uh, you, are you going to try to go your place and bargain? I said, no. As soon as I receive your letter, I faxed him within 10 minutes with my commitment. And uh, basic research is the driving force behind many breakthroughs that improve the survival and quality of life for people with cancer. And by establishing the research center, we have now created the opportunity for collaboration. We will be able to expand translational research and move research from bench to bedside. That's my main concept. And uh, as I told you, this is a new center because we are going to recruit a lot of people and with different expertise. And we are going to collaborate with the main campus and uh, other campuses here also. This is actually really going to big help to the hospitals. And now, now, with this center, we are able to recruit other clinical faculty because we have a space. We already committed uh, 1,300 square feet for uh, two pediatric surgeons, and we gave almost 2,000 square feet for pediatric uh, uh, department. And then uh, pediatric surgery also going to recruit more people. So the world space we are going to provide for everybody. So this is going to be a, not only a cancer research, it is going to expand in other areas. And I really appreciate Dr. Shara Rush. We are expanding the health outcome research also. And we really appreciate uh, a OSF help and then as well as a cater pillar help, and Joe Flaherty also gave us some money to establish that research. Not only cancer research, we are expanding in all other areas of research because of the community help, and especially Caterpillar and OSF, and uh, I want other hospitals also involved in this. We really appreciate the support. And with this new recruitment, we are going to generate not only the more funds and more jobs, but we are going to take more patents and take the basic research from bench to bedside. And we are now, a lot of clinical faculty also realize the importance of research, and they are trying to uh, ask one of their faculty to do research, and uh, I really appreciate a lot of the departments are coming forward now, especially uh, medicine and then pediatric department and uh, surgery and all other departments, they are showing a lot of interest towards the basic research and take this basic research towards the or translational. That happens. And uh, I don't want to talk research and then it is there everything. And I want to, the most important thing is I want to acknowledge the people that's most important who did all the things here. First, I really appreciate Dr. Rager and then Joe Flurdy and President White, Todd Lawrence, and the previous administration. And I'm really very, very thankful Dr. Rager recruited me here. And I told him I will take challenge. I will make this place successful. I promised him 
I'm going to keep my promise and people may hear I'm leaving this place, I'm not going to leave till I retire. That much I guarantee. And uh, second thing, all the administration, uh, Ray LaHood office, we have so many meetings, Ray LaHood and Glenn Barton both co-chairs this, and we have at least six or seven meetings in his office with all the political leaders and the community leaders, and then uh, uh, finally this happens. I really appreciate their both co-chair this, and Joe Flaherty came a couple of times, and later he's on the phone, and uh, that's why all this happens. It didn't happen just like that, okay? It's a lot of effort, community, and then the hospitals give money, and all that. So many people involved in this. It's not a single-handed, and uh, it took a lot of time. And also, I really appreciate Dr. Rush, and when she took in charge, and then uh, she talked with so many people, administration, she struggled quite a bit, I know that. So eventually it happened with Heartland Partnership, and then university administration, sometimes it takes time. And then I was one concerned when I heard that Joe Flaherty is leaving, I was kind of a little bit nervous, he promised me. Then he told me, Dr. Rao, don't worry, Dr. Azar uh, will take care of you. And then. I, I noticed in the Dr. Azar, not only he's an ophthalmologist and surgeon, and he had his NIH grants just now, he said he know the value of it. When I asked his request, he said right away, go ahead, we are going to do it. So I really appreciate him. Now he is a permanent dean. I expect more from him. I'm <laughs> sure he is going to help me. And not only from him, I want all the leaders of the hospitals and then the Caterpillar and the other community leaders will support me the way you guys support the building and then definitely will be one of the leading center here. I can promise you that much with small resources. And uh, finally, I want to acknowledge uh, my son last night, he told he's not coming and he's here. I really appreciate him and all my family support and with my wife, I'm very successful. And also, I really appreciate my team, my administrative team, my research people who worked with me for the past 10 years. Uh, all we are together worked this uh, very good. I really appreciate each and every one. If I missed anyone, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you for the attention to the details like that, sir. <laughs> well, it's very humbling uh, to follow someone like Dr. Rao. And in an event like this, uh, it's, it's not only humbling, but for Caterpillar and for Peoria, this is a wonderful day. A wonderful day because we're celebrating the symbolism of some of the things that have been commented earlier of people coming together, having the vision, going back to when uh, Secretary LaHood got together with several of the leaders, Keith Steffen, uh, Glenn Barton, I know uh, Sid Banward who was here, bringing together uh, leaders within the community regardless of their uh, political affiliation to make decisions in a very visionary way and now to see these become a reality is pretty exciting. And contrary to what many of you may hear and read in the press, uh, Caterpillar's home is in Peoria and it's For over 85 years, this has been our home, and uh, with involvement like the, the, the research center here, through the Caterpillar Foundation, we're going to be here for a long time. And I'd encourage all of you, as you go through the tours today, uh, in the subsequent days, take a walk down Main Street and look at the Pear Marquette as it's going to be built and take a walk down to Washington Street in Maine and look at the block where we have a world-class museum that's being put built right now and a world-class Caterpillar Visitor Center investing over $150 million in one block. Uh, not to take anything away from the, what we're experiencing and, and celebrating here today, but Peoria is a world-class city with world-class people. And selfishly, as one of the major employers in town, investments like this and in bringing in world-class uh, researchers to Peoria not only helps provide better health care for all of us as citizens of Peoria, but it also helps us attract better people. 
even better than those that we have today, whether it's for the, the, the School of Research or whether it's for other companies here in town, this is a great attraction to Peoria and makes this a long, uh, a very attractive place to live, and it will for years to come. So we're very pleased to be here. Uh, Caterpillar's involvement through our foundation, as Dr. Rush pointed out, uh, takes many different forms. And with our investment in this research center, through the leadership and wisdom of some of the visionaries who have preceded us, we're very excited to see this finally take life and will be supporters of this facility for years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rush. This really is uh, an exciting day for our community, and I'm proud to have the opportunity to, uh, to uh, say a few words on behalf of, of the city and the city council members that are here. I'm also happy that Jim spoke before me and talked just a little bit about uh, vision and, and uh, the importance of vision in this overall uh, project because I had a couple quotes from people who are a lot more quotable than I am about vision. And Joel Barker said, vision without action is a dream. Action without vision is simply passing time. Action with vision is making a positive difference. And not to be outdone, the business guy who gets quoted a lot, Jack Welch, said, good business leaders create a vision, articulate the vision, passionately own the vision, and relentlessly drive it to completion. And the vision of, of those uh, who had the foresight uh, Dr. Rager and others to recruit Dr. Rao and help him assemble his team in Peoria and realize the vision of this cancer research, research facility are, are the ones who really deserve our thanks today. This building will symbolize the changing face of Peoria's future and the culture that that change will represent. Instead of witnessing brain drain in our community, our children and our children's children will strive to stay here and contribute to the expanding research and development that really will transform this community. The new term that will be used to describe this new culture will be brain gain. Opportunities presented by this facility will rival and surpass many that have preceded them at the Ag Lab, Caterpillar's Tech Center, and other local research and development achievements. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Dean Nazar, Dean Rush, and everyone here today. And thank God for blessing Peoria with these outstanding people working to rid our world of these terrible cancers. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everyone. Well, I'm very, very grateful to be here today and to participate in this magnificent ceremony. I must tell you, I will never, ever forget the day Dean Rager, that guy right there, showed up with the possibility of recruiting Dr. Rao and his vision that today we are all celebrating. So Dr. Rao and so many others in the community, I just can't thank you enough for having the opportunity to participate with my colleagues to make this wonderful, wonderful facility possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this really depicts the breadth that is Peoria, because we do a lot of things and we do them very well. And uh, this is kind of the crown jewel of that. But let me just talk politically about this a little bit. Uh, when I was uh, elected in 2006, uh, uh, those helping to guide me, uh, Senator George Shadid, whose uh, seat I replaced, and uh, Senator Dale Reisinger, uh, told me very quickly, this is important. We need to get this done. And, uh, and I really want to extend my, my thanks, uh, though, to, to Ray LaHood, because uh, you're the one that shepherded this through the process. And uh, I'll just end with this. Uh, when we do something in a bipartisan way, that's the best that we can be, and we need to continue it. Thank you. Well, it's an honor uh, to follow uh, both Senator Kaler and Representative Leach. And as the newest member of our Springfield legislative team, uh, it's, it's great to be here for this uh, opening of the Cancer Center. And as Dave mentioned, uh, you know, this really sets the precedent for how we get things done in this community. You know, our legislative team here, uh, the, the three representatives and Senator Kaler and I, 
uh, that work very closely together in Springfield to bring like things like this together uh, and, and really sets the precedent for how we proceed in the future to do things like this for the city of Peoria and for our community. And uh, I also want to uh, say thanks to my predecessor, Dale Reisinger and Senator George Shadid for the work they did to make this happen here today. The other thing that's very important to remember as we look at the growth of our medical community in Peoria, whether it's the growth at St. Francis or Methodist or Proctor, and now with this, and you look at great medical facilities around this country, whether it's the Mayo Clinic or Johns Hopkins, this is sort of the, the, the start of what we have in Peoria, and this is another building block for how we have growth in Peoria in our community. And we couldn't ask for a better uh, facility than this here today. And so I say thank you for everybody that contributed to this and uh, look forward to uh, continue to work hard to, to continue to build our medical community uh, in Peoria. So thank you very much. Good morning, it is a great day. Uh, we had an exciting time getting forward with this project, but one of the more interesting features was when we were aggregating the funds. So at the beginning of this project, lots of different folks were contributing dollars. The state was participating. The University of Illinois trustees were participating. And we came up with a notion that we were going to aggregate the funds. And uh, that was a really interesting phenomena for the University of Illinois trustees. They said, what do you mean you're going to aggregate the funds? And what that meant is we put it together into a pool and then could bid projects and do the construction process in a more efficient model, in a way to build a building that not only was the research facility, but as you came in, you saw a new front door to the College of Medicine, a 40-year-old uh, building that needed some refreshing and some modernizing to create workable living spaces within this that were not only dedicated to the medical practice and medical education and medical research, but to the community and the community that's here today. So we've had a number of very fun uh, processes through this. We appreciate the elected officials' money, but we also appreciate the idea that they believe in people in our community to support and do these types of projects. We believe in the University of Illinois' strong commitment to cancer research, the idea that cancer can get solved, and we know the cure for cancer is research. We believe uh, also that the skilled trades and some of the folks that had their hands at work here over the last year and a half uh, need to be thanked, including River City Construction and Farnsworth, the architects and engineers for this. Uh, you remember the raining spring we had and uh, 30, 40 days of rain? And those workers, those skilled tradesmen, were out slogging away in the mud out there. And when we came over to sort of motivate them, keep them on track for the type of uh, commitment and calendar we were trying to do, you talk to a few of these guys and they say, you know, my mother died of cancer or my brother had cancer. And so we're putting our heart in this. And it's a different type of building. In their lifetime, they may build 40 or 50 big structures. This is one of those meaningful things that they can do to help contribute to the cure for cancer. The staff that was involved is really a very important element. I'm not just talking about all the staff that's in administration and all the folks that got involved, but uh, Ryan Spain, you've heard his name a couple of times, is uh, with the Heartland Partnership, also a city council person, uh, really plowed through a lot of the major problems. So when you get into issues about shortfall and certain amount of cash here and trade-offs with the amount of IT we need to build in, you saw a lot of electronics and a lot of other elements. It was really uh, a very well managed process. We came in on budget and on time and we built a building that we think is very notable and we think it'll last the st or stand the, uh, the test of time for its architectural integrity and its overall use. And then finally, on behalf of the Heartland Partnership, we do thank uh, Dean Sarah Rush and all the folks that uh, came together because this has been a community collaboration. This has been a very exciting project. It's one of those things where uh, Wally, who's the building's facility guy here, who this is his baby, this is his child, could help push through some of the difficult decisions. And I think Wally probably has a couple of markered names on a few beams in this building. And long after the Wallys are gone and the administrative staffs and Ryan and Jim are gone, this building will continue to serve the public purpose of research and the public purpose of medical education. So on behalf of the Heartland Partnership Board of Directors, the hundreds of people that have been involved in this project, the 200,000 employees that will reap the benefits of medicine and medical education in our region, we thank the University of Illinois, Dean Rush, 
Jassy Rao, and all those electeds that have come to make this project a success in our region. And I'm your last speaker. Thank you. <laughs>